Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about photo critiques. So I'm Daniel Norton, photographer here in New York. I make videos like this about philosophy, about technique. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you're interested in that kind of stuff. And let's get to it. So I thought about this. I uh, actually made a little note to myself to make this video a few weeks back. So we did a, a photo critique uh, at Adorama, uh, myself and Seth Miranda. They're really fun. Um, we unfortunately don't stream them or fortunately depending on how you want to look at it uh, because we feel like the people are submitting their work and um, you know they don't necessarily want the world to be like looking at us uh, criticizing them it creates a little more of an intimate uh, atmosphere so if you are in the New York area and you want to come to one of these be on the lookout for those um, on the Adorama events anyways it made me start to think about how photo critiques are super interesting um, you know, when you're in school, uh, if you go to school of photography, you're doing it every week, right? And you're not only are you being critiqued, but you're learning to critique. And there's so many benefits to this that I just thought I'd talk about a little bit. So first of all, from the position of the person getting the critique, the critique. Number one, you're gonna you may be one of a couple times that's people. Um, if you're the kind of person that can't take a critique then maybe this will teach you to do it because it's important if you want to do work commercially because you will constantly be critiqued and a lot of times they're not actually going to critique you. Like they're not going to be like, oh, well, you know, this blah, blah, blah. They're just going to say no and not hire you, right? So you have to sometimes go into it thinking, okay, well, why didn't they accept that image or why didn't the image do the thing I wanted it to do? If you try to sell a stock image, where you're trying to pitch something, you try, you know, you may have to learn how to critique yourself, which means going to being critiqued regularly will, will hopefully help you do that. Um, we definitely get the people at the critique, some of them that come in there thinking they shot the best picture in the world. And then once we start talking about, you know, how it can be improved or whatever, they get a little offended. If you are a kind of person that gets offended, get over it. You know, it basically you need to be open to critique. You don't know. That being said, if I look at your image and I say something about it, you can 100% believe that I am wrong. Even if I have a lot more experience, even if, uh, you know, whatever, I have, you know, photo rules to back it up. If you want to feel like your image is still strong anyways, that's fine. But then why are you there being critiqued? Like you're bringing an image in hopefully because you want uh, some idea how it can be improved, right? If you're just going in for the accolades, then go ahead and enter a photo contest and you can win money and have it hung on the wall or whatever. But a critique is meant to look at your images seriously and help you improve. So be ready for that. Also, if you go to a group critique like we're doing, it's super useful because you might go in there and you might shoot completely different stuff than everybody else. But if you watch how each image is being critiqued, you will learn something because every single image can help you learn. Everything you look at, it might not be the thing you shoot, but all the things that we talk about in photo critiques apply to the vast majority of images. So it's actually very interesting sometimes how when we do these, you know, we actually see threads going through them where it's like, oh, interesting, you know, this person shot that, this person shot that, but they have the same kind of thing going on. Or where we might mention how something could be done a little differently and somebody else did it differently. So it actually helps you there. So yeah, sometimes, I mean, there's actually people that come to these photo critiques that don't submit. They just sit in the audience just to watch because it's a good way to learn, right? Learning uh, by watching people dissect other images is a good way to learn because you can see, like, you might actually, and there's been many times, when we, sometimes we say this with Seth, when, when we're looking at him ahead of time, we're like, oh, as soon as we put this one up, everybody's going to be like, oh, that's good. And then as soon as we start going through it, they'll understand why it's not, you know, or not, it could be improved or whatever. Because one thing that I always say at these critiques, and I say a lot, and I'm going to say it now, is that your image should be strong no matter what. So meaning that, like, if it's a portrait, it should be a strong portrait, whether it's some random person that you photographed, or it should be a strong portrait, whether it's a celebrity. Like if the only reason that shot is good is because it's a celebrity, then it's probably not a good shot. You know, same thing for any kind of like special effects that you have in there, any kind of special techniques you're using. If the technique you're using is the only reason why it's good, if it's because they're, you know, if we go to Comic-Con and we shoot somebody in an awesome cosplay and it's only a good picture because the cosplay is awesome, then it's not really a good picture. It's just a good cosplay that you happen to capture, right? What we want to do is create an image that's powerful no matter what. And I mean, granted, sometimes you can't separate subject from technique, but in general, that's the idea, right? The image should be powerful no matter what, you know, without people recognizing what it is or who it is, um, they should just look at it and be like, that's a great image in and of its own thing, you know, because you're not there to tell your story a lot of times when you're showing your images. They're hanging on a wall or they're in a magazine or they're in your portfolio that you submitted or they're on the web and people are looking at them. You're not there to explain it. And even if you write a whole explanation of it on Instagram, 
A lot of times people don't read that, right? They just tap and roll. That's basically how that stuff works. So you have to be ready to have your images stand on their own and going to critique will help you do that because it helps you understand how other people see your images because the person critiquing is going to look at the image and be like, blah, 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 and say what they think. And that may or may not at all be what, you know, you thought you were saying. And you know what? They're not wrong because that's just what they see and that's the way it is, you know? So it's important. But I also wanted to talk about critiques being positive for the person doing them. What I've come to realize is that the more I do of these, the more they make me think about some of the basics of photography that we kind of get used to and we take for granted. And then we start breaking rules, which again, you can break the rules as long as you can do whatever. But sometimes having a refresher in photography, even if you're giving it to yourself because you're critiquing them, is great, right? Like I'll look at images when I'm doing a critique and I'll be like, oh, you know, composition, you could crop it here, you could do this, you could do this. And it makes me think, oh, wow, that's actually a really good piece of information, you know, for myself, you know. So I think that that what, what might be really cool is if you guys have small groups or even if you do it online, right? If you form these groups and you and you show each other images and you critique each other, you know. And again, don't... So when I was in school, my professor had a rule for critiques. All of them did really. started when we were sophomores. Um, you were not allowed to just say you like something. You always had to give a constructive criticism. You could say, I like this, images, this image and why, but you always had to say something negative. You always had to say something that could be fixed, that was not perfect, that you thought could be done to improve the image. If you go into a critique where everybody knows that's a situation and everybody has to do that, then hopefully that will help with the hurt feelings because I know that people are probably watching this going, well, I got four or five friends that are photographers, but when we get together to show our images, we're not going to be like, you know, you could have done this better. But if you set it up in a way that that's the point of the critique, right? Somebody puts their image up, first person goes, they say what they like, they say what they think could be improved, goes to the next person, say what they like, say what can be improved, goes around, right? Some people will agree with other people, some people won't. There'll be some conversation, which hopefully will help everybody grow and get better. That's kind of the point. And I think this is where the power of a photo critique can come in. You know, not just, you know, because there's also these photo critiques, which may be worthwhile depending on where you stand, where you come in, you know, and you get somebody you really, uh, you know, uh, trust or appreciate, like, you know, a, a photographer uh, or an editor for a magazine, and they critique you, and usually you, they, you pay for that. Um, those are great because they're going to give you very specific uh, industry things, but just even just doing it with your small group is going to be powerful and going to be worth it. And I think it's something that you guys should do. I don't know if they're like, uh, you know, let me know in the comments, do you guys have like small groups you hang out with and shoot or do you pretty much solo? Is there other, are there other, other people that, even if it's online, that you felt like you could actually do something like this and have like this open conversation? You know, you could do something like Google Hangouts and put the images up and, and uh, I'll be talking in, in cameras. Um, it really, I think is a good thing. You know, uh, I think it could be super useful and uh, I feel like it's something that maybe more of us should do. Uh, another version of this, although not exactly the same, and it's not really a critique, but I'm just going to throw it out there because I thought of it, is uh, what we used to do, and I haven't done this in a long time. Maybe I'll see if Seth wants to do this. Um, when I lived in Miami, we used to do print exchanges. So four or five of us would get together, and we would all bring a print, and we'd you know have dinner or whatever, and then everybody would get a print from somebody else. Usually you'd do like a number, who gets to go first, you pick the print you wanted. Uh, I think the rule was you couldn't take somebody else, the same person's print, to months in a row. I can't remember exactly what the rules were, but you know, you, you set, set aside some rules. So basically everybody, or you can do like a secret Santa type thing where everybody reaches in and you get that person's uh, print, whatever. The idea is that uh, not to hurt anybody's feelings and then also that everybody can get a chance to get pictures from everybody throughout the group as time goes on. Um, Cause that's the coolest thing, right? You have your friend's pictures, you know, hanging on the wall, right? Uh, although I don't really hang, well, I have pictures on the wall, but they're not my friend's pictures. So that's another thing. It's not really exactly a critique, although I guess if nobody ever picks a picture, it's kind of a critique. Um, or people would get rid of a picture first. Um, although, you know, pictures of puppies or whatever will probably get picked first no matter what. Uh, because again, it's that subject matter thing. So try to think about that, you know, when, when, you're, when you're showing your work, you know. Think about the image being powerful, whether or not it's a subject that people, you know, normally would uh, think, you know. It's like there's certain trendy things that people are always going to, and I mean like long-term trendy things, people always like pictures of animals. People love pictures of homeless people for some reason, street talk. I hate that. If you bring, if you ever come to Monica Tricks and you bring a street photography picture of a homeless person, it better be the best picture in the world because that is such a cheap shot for me that, yeah, that's, that's a whole other video. So yeah, 
don't do that. I don't even want to have that conversation. But anyways, um, think about it though. Is your image strong if you take that out of it? Is it a strong image compositionally? Is it strong, you know, lighting wise? Is it is it bringing people in the viewer? Are they looking at it, you know, and going, oh wow. And then also the intent of the image, you know, because sometimes we get images where we're like, oh, this is like a pretty thing that you might throw, you know, on the background of your phone, you know, and that's not an insult. That's, you know, pictures need to be used for that. You know, and then, like I have a, a, what do you call it? Amazon fire stick. And like when I'm not watching things, like pictures come up and they're beautiful landscapes. I would never spend time looking at these images, but they go past and it's kind of like, oh, that's pretty, whatever. They're, they're beautiful, but they're just, you know, they're, they're, I wouldn't say they're bad photos. They're not bad, but that's the point of the photo is that they're, they're a screensaver. You know, some pictures are screensavers. Some pictures are, oh God, I have to look at this. And some pictures are, uh, uh, I don't, I don't want to look at this, but I have to, you know, because it's teaching me something and making me feel a certain way that, you know, like some kind of documentary or whatever. So there's diff different reasons to, to have photos. Um, and you have to think about what you're trying to do when, you, when you're creating it. And then that's what the critique is about, right? You have an idea and then people that are critiquing are going to give what they see there. And if it's not what you thought, then figure out where that disconnect is. So in summary, <laughs> uh, photo critiques, I think they're great. Whether you go to somebody like a, like an open critique, like we do, you hire somebody to do a more particular critique because you're trying to move your business forward. You go to them at, you know, if you go to things like uh, photo plus expo or WPPI or these kind of things, there's always like these photo critiques set up, you know, where you can, you pay and you sit in front of, you know, whatever uh, established photographers or speakers or whatever, and they'll, they'll critique. Or you do this group thing where you just kind of get together with people that you know and that you, you're you all kind of coming up together and have this conversation. You know, let's look at each other's work and see how we can help each other make it better. Because I think that's super important. You know I'm for the group stuff, so there you go. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do ring the bell and all that so you get the notifications. Um, and I'll see you next time.